Bay Ridge. Welcome to another edition of After Hours. Uh, today, as we finished up our this uh, period of time where we've been looking at Mark chapter 1, uh, we have an incident where Jesus heals a leper. And I mentioned just briefly that most translations, including the older NIV that I was using, the 1984 version, said that Jesus was filled with compassion. But the 2011 edition of the NIV, which is a very popular Bible, says that Jesus was indignant. If you notice, in, again, in Mark 141, Jesus is filled with compassion, is what the older NIV and most uh, translations say, but the newer one says Jesus was indignant, but then he still healed the leper. So the question is, why does it have this different translation? This is a little bit more technical after hours, but I wanna describe why they did it. It was not just that the translators of the NIV decided they didn't like Jesus being full of compassion. Uh, they thought he was indignant. There are reasons why they did this. So I wanna talk about what, what it might uh, mean both ways and I'll describe what's going on here. Now, the reason that most translations say he was filled with compassion is because most uh, Greek texts that we have have the word for compassion. They say Jesus was actually filled with compassion. This is the overwhelming uh, majority of Greek manuscripts have this particular word that um, cut, comes from a Greek word splantna, which means uh, we, we have it as our guts. Sometimes it says, you know, where Paul will say filled with bowels, your bowels filled with compassion is where it came out of. That's the old King James. Uh, and, and that's the word that's in most of the manuscripts, that Jesus was filled with compassion towards the person. Obviously, we know from the story he had compassion on the leper because he reached out and he healed him. And we also know from many other passages that Jesus is moved with compassion. For example, in Mark 6.34, we read that Jesus was looking at the crowds and he was filled with compassion for them because they were like a sheep without a shepherd. Uh, in Luke 7, 13, we read where there's a mother of a dead son is there and Jesus is moved with compassion as he sees her weeping over the loss of the son and he reaches out and he heals the son. So for many people, they just look and say, well, there's more texts that have the word compassion and Jesus we know is a man of compassion. Our Savior is full of compassion, and he's doing an act of compassion, actually healing, so compassion seems to be the better translation. Well, then you ask, why would the newer NIV uh, change it to Jesus uh, was indignant? Well, the reason for that is a few manuscripts actually do have a different word. Rather than the word um, that deals with compassion, they have a word, orgistes, which means actually to be indignant or to be angry. Now, why would scholars take that if there's more manuscripts have compassion? Why would the group that's doing the NIV translation say, well, but we think that the original thing here was actually that Jesus was indignant? Well, number one, it's what scholars refer to as the harder reading. In other words, if you were reading a manuscript and you went through and you thought they might have made a mistake, you're, you're not likely to take the word uh, compassion and change it to indignant, but you might be more likely to say, I don't think he was indignant, I think he was full of compassion. And we know in, uh, you know, in other places he was full of compassion and change it that way. So they think if the copyists were gonna make a change, it would be more likely to change uh, indignant to compassion rather than compassion to indignant. And so they say that they think it's more likely that the original thing that Mark wrote was indignant. Secondly, Matthew and Luke, who we believe are based on Mark, that they had Mark in front of them, they don't mention Jesus' emotional state at all. They just say the leper falls down, ask him to heal him, and Jesus heals him. And they say, well, it'd be more likely that they would drop out that Jesus was indignant, and they would think that people might misunderstand that, rather than if it said Jesus was full of compassion. So therefore, again, they think that probably the earliest copies of Mark had Jesus being indignant. The third thing is in verse 43, it uses the word that Jesus sternly warns the man. And the particular word there, uh, embrimomai, um, is a word that means uh, almost to have a stern anger to uh, being uh, 
to, to, to having a sense of anger about you actually. And it's, uh, it means to feel something strongly, but very often there is a note of anger there, which is why we're bringing up the word indignant. And if you notice here, uh, and that particular word, by the way, is used in John chapter 11, where Jesus is standing at the tomb of Lazarus. And many scholars think there is a note of indignation there, not at Lazarus, but rather at death itself. Um, that that death has been unleashed. And so th these scholars say, well, notice if it was indignant, it makes sense that, uh, you know, the, the, the copyist might have changed it later and Matthew and Luke would have dropped out the word. And it seems to fit. It's, it's the, the word there that Jesus sternly warns him or rebukes him is closer to the, the indignant word than it is to the word regarding compassion. And then they also note, if you notice and read carefully, Mark doesn't actually mention that the man is sick with leprosy. He says he's unclean. It never mentions sickness or healing. It literally says unclean and Jesus says, be clean. And of course, interestingly, if you remember from uh, last week, Mark in this chapter mainly has referred to demons, not by the word demon, but rather as unclean spirits. So it's interesting that he's not here speaking of the leper as being sick, but rather of the leper as uh, being unclean. And so it could be that Jesus was indignant or angry, not at the leper, not at the situation, but rather at the work of Satan and the, and the spreading of sin and that has brought all this uh, grief and pain. And again, I believe something similar is happening at Lazarus's tomb. I do think Jesus is not just weeping tears of grief. He is doing that, but he is also weeping tears of, of anger and indignation at the entire situation. It was not supposed to be this way. There should not be sickness. There should not be pain. There should not be death. And so if in fact the leprosy was supernaturally caused and there was a uh, demonic spirit behind it, it could easily be seen why Jesus would be indignant and why uh, he would be uh, angry even at Satan bringing about this suffering in this man's life for many years. So it is possible. That's why the NIV scholars decided they were actually going to go with indignant. Now, at the end of the day, it could be either one. I tend to believe that it's actually compassion. I believe Jesus is showing compassion as he heals a man. It doesn't directly say that it's a demonic spirit here. You have to do a lot of careful reading. Uh, so I think it's compassion, but it could be that it was indignant. And I took the time to kind of go through this because you may see some of these readings in different translations. It's why it's good for us to read different translations of the Bible, pay attention to what they're doing, and recognize it's usually not just scholars trying to distort God's word. Uh, the scholars that were translating the, the 2011 edition of the NIV are very good with Greek uh, and, and they love Jesus. They're not trying to distort God's word. They were trying to weigh all this out because there are, when you've got up to 10,000 different manuscripts and fragments of the New Testament, there are going to be a few places like this where there are some different readings. And this is kind of the work that scholars do. And I would encourage you, I'm grateful that we've got scholars who are working through these things. They're meticulously trying to read it to help us understand what God's word is. Here, it doesn't make any difference regarding uh, Jesus's deity or what he's doing for us or any key doctrine, but it might give a little bit different picture of what was going on. So it's a thing that we can kind of look at and that's some of the work that goes behind why different translations will have some different words. So you can understand that a little bit. A great translation of the Bible, by the way, is the Net Bible, the New English Translation of the Bible. You can look it up online and they will go into the discussion of these kind of things. They actually translated the, this passage having the word indignant as well. And they'll go into some of these reasons behind it. So you can always see a little bit why uh, scholars are kind of thinking through and they'll translate one way or the other. But in any event, I hope it uh, helps you understand. Do know this, Jesus is compassionate towards you and me and regarding our sin. We're heading into Advent. We're going to be giving thanks to God that he loved us so much 
that his son came. And we're going to be looking here at the unexpected king, how Jesus kind of turns things upside down for us, surprises us in the way he comes and what he does to work to save you and me. I look forward to gathering with everybody uh, this week. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving, and then we'll gather together on Sunday to worship our great God together. God bless. Thank you.